Hello, Wafundi. Um, welcome again to our channel. So um, the last time that we talked about electrostatics, we we're busy with uh, um, uh, just calculating on forces. Today, I just want to take you through um, electrostatic uh, uh, field. All right. So uh, please enjoy the lesson and please try as much as possible when uh, it calls for you to pause the lesson and just try to do the question yourself. Do so. And please remember at the end of the lesson, just uh, click on the like button. Uh, please post comments as well. Uh, they will help us to improve our lessons quite a lot. So let's start. Mm -hmm. All right. So our lesson is on uh, electrostatic fields today. So I'm not really going to go uh, too much into details insofar as electrostatic fields are concerned. But by definition, what is a field? Um, well, we say it's a region in space where a force can be felt. Okay. So in this case, because we're talking about electrostatic field, right, we're simply saying, suppose we take a charge, let's take a sphere, a sphere, okay, that is charged, let's say it's positively charged, okay, let's say just for argument's sake, four microcoulombs of charge, right? Now we are simply saying, if you were to place a charge around this point charge, it would actually feel a, a force. So what does that actually mean? It means there is an electric or an electrostatic field around, okay? Right? It means uh, that point or that point charge would actually would be in an electrostatic field. Why? Because it would actually feel a force. Now, just uh, not to go too much into details, right? As, as I did indicate to you, I will try to cover this um, under our grade 11 uh, uh, syllabus, all right, uh, for those of you who might be interested. But um, what we do know is that when we want to calculate the field intensity, okay, around a, a, a point charge, what we simply do is that we use the equation E is equals to K Q divided by R squared. Notice, it almost looks like our, uh, uh, our equation, uh, our Coulomb's law equation, except, first of all, on the one side, you do not have F for force. Now you have E for field. Okay? Right? So that's the field intensity. And then now, instead of having two charges on the right-hand side, you only have one charge. And that's the charge that would be in question. Now, let me just explain this a little bit more. Right? So suppose I were to place, all right, a point P here. So point P is not a charge, okay? It's just a point, a region, a space, all right? Just I'm choosing any random space around this charge. And I'm asking myself, if I were to place a charge at point P, would it be able to feel a force? And what would be the nature of that force? Now, first of all, that force would depend on what type of charge would be placed at P. So suppose if I were to put a negative charge and this charge is positive, then what, what type of a force would be felt in that particular case? It means that it would be a force of repulsion. So if I were to place a negative charge at P, it would feel, sorry, a force of attraction because of that charge there. Because a negative and a positive, in that case, they are unlike charges, they would definitely attract each other. If the charge that I were to place at P would be positive, it means that whatever uh, 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 charge I place at P uh, would experience a force of repulsion because they would be like charges and so they would actually repel each other. Now, just to take you, uh, uh, not to go too much uh, uh, into uh, gory details, so what we then assume in this particular ca case, please, I want you to listen very carefully. Every time that we ask you to determine the field at a certain point, you will always assume that at that point, or you'd always sort of imagine that there is a positively charged particle. We call this a positive test charge. Okay? 
So as a result, if I'm looking for the field at P, you first of all imagine, okay, at P there is a positive test charge. And so what type of a force would that point or that imaginary charge feel? It would be a force of repulsion. So whenever we deal with fields, and I'm going to show you in a little while uh, because I want us to do this in terms of a question. So whenever we are looking for the field intensity at a particular point, we always assume a positive test charge. So what I want us to do very quickly is, as I said to you, I didn't want us to go into the gory details. I want us to cover this in the form of a question. So what I did is that I took a question. I think this was a 2005 paper, right? I took a question from there. All right, and I want us to do this question together. So I didn't write out the full details of the question. All I want us to do is to focus on the calculations thereof. Now, please, I want you to see what is happening in this question. So first of all, we've got charge Q1, which is minus 2,5 microcoulombs. We've got charge Q2, which is a positive 6 microcoulombs, and they are placed one meter apart. Okay, right. And then we've got a point P. Notice P is not a charge. P is just simply a point in space. So we're simply saying at point P, right, we want uh, uh, to, to, to find out what is the net electrostatic field intensity at point P. Remember that P is not a, a, a charge, but it is simply a point in space. It is a region in space where we can feel a force. Now, I want us to do this question together. So what's the first thing that we do when we are dealing with electric field, all right? Just like we did with forces, the first thing that we do, we're going to draw a vector diagram, okay? Right, now in order for us to draw that vector diagram, it simply means, first of all, I must make an assumption. So what is our assumption? What do we assume about point P? We assume that at, at P, there is an imaginary positive charge. So it means that the, uh, uh, at point P, there's an imaginary test charge, which is positive. Now let's try and draw that vector diagram, right? So now, first of all, let's just look at what happens at P because of Q1, all right? So let's forget about Q2. Let's look at P and Q1. All right. So then the first thing that I do, I say to myself, OK, suppose let's assume that P is able to move to respond because of the force that it would feel because of Q1. Now, the first thing I ask myself, right, what type of a force exists between Q1 and P now? So first of all, P is positive and Q1 is negative. We're given that. All right. So it means that the force that is felt at, uh, 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 by P because of Q1 is a force of attraction. Now we assume that point P can move, okay? So in which direction, or uh, what would be the direction of the force that P feels because of Q1, all right? So in this case, here's Q1 and here's P, all right? So what are we going to do with Q1 and P? So what we're simply going to do here is P, uh, Q1 here is P. What are they doing? They're attracting each other. Okay. And so if they are attracting each other, here is P moving. So P would move towards Q1. So the force that P feels because of Q1 would be a force to the, to the right. Okay. So here's Q1 again. Here's P. What are they doing to each other? They are attracting each other. So in this case, what would happen to, Q, uh, to P? Rather, P would move towards Q1. So here it is. So the force that uh, uh, P feels because of Q1 would be a force towards the right. So we'd say this is the field due to Q1. Please keep in mind, we are not calculating force this time around. We are calculating field. So that is why I'm using that symbol E there. All right. And then secondly, Right now we forget about Q1 for a second and now we're focusing on Q2. All right. So now here you have Q2 and P. All right. Positive charge and we've got an imaginary positive charge as well here. Right. 
So in which direction would the force that P feels uh, because of Q1 be? All right, so here's Q2, here is P. What are they doing to each other? They are now repelling each other. They are like charges, they are repelling each other. So they are pushing each other away, but which one are we focusing on? We are focusing on P. So in fact, P, all right, test charge P would move towards the left because of Q2. So it would be repelled to the left. So in that case, it means that, all right, I'm going to draw that. All right, so once again, please note I am being very deliberate about the size, okay? Because look at this. Q1 is much closer to P, so in that case, it means that the force that P feels because of Q1 would be much bigger than the force that P feels because of Q2. So look at that. Q1 has a, a longer line, so uh, showing you the magnitude of it. So in this case, it means that the, the, the field intensity due to Q1 would be much larger than the field intensity felt because of Q2. So naturally, what would this then do? It means that if we're looking for our net field, it would be a field towards the Le uh, towards the right sorry about that so it would be a field towards the right okay so now here's what i want us to do very quickly i want us to then make a calculation all right so once again we're saying because q1 is bigger than uh, uh, q2 eq2 rather so it means that e net would be towards the right okay now i'm going to say well for the purpose of this illustration take direction to the right as positive Okay, so we are choosing direction to the right as our positive direction. We'll see what we're going to do with that. Now, let's calculate our field intensity in this case. So let's calculate field intensity because of Q1. So we're going to say EQ1, that's going to be KQ1 divided by R squared. Please remember that's E meaning field, okay, due to Q1. All right, and remember, because we're not calculating force, we're only using one charge divided by the distance. Now, let's substitute quickly. So we know that's Coulomb's constant, that's 9 exponent 9, multiplied by the charge Q1, okay? Now, please remember, I said to you, you do not substitute the sign, okay? What we do with the sign is that it only helps us to find out what is the direction of that field. So all, all I need is just the magnitude of it. So 2,5 times 10. Remember micro, we said it's times 10 minus 6, okay? Divided by, what is the distance between Q1 and P, all right? That distance is 0, 0,3 there. So this is 0, 0,3, but please remember to square it, okay? So let's take our calculator quickly, all right? So we're saying 9 exponent 9 multiplied by... 2,5 uh, exponent minus 6, uh, that's minus 6 there, and then we divide that by 0, 0,3 squared, okay, I get 250,000, okay, 250,000, if you wanted to, you can actually, um, uh, you can actually change that into, um, uh, uh, um, exponents or, or into um, the scientific form format. Now, please note, field is measured in newtons per coulomb, okay? Remember, this is now, uh, we're not calculating a force which is measured in newtons, but we say it's measured in uh, newtons per coulomb, and this comes from the fact that uh, field is actually force per unit charge, okay? force divided by charge, so that's newtons per coulomb. Now, let's state the direction of it. That's where the sign comes in. We said the direction of uh, Q1, uh, the field due to Q1 is towards the right. So in this case, we know this is towards the, the right, okay? And then we do the same thing with the, the field due to Q2, right? So we're saying field due to Q2, that's going to be K Q2 divided by R squared. We're going to do exactly the same thing, 9 exponent 9 
multiplied by uh, now what is the distance between uh, uh, sorry what is the charge uh, of uh, q2 uh, that's six exponent that's six micrometer uh, micro coulombs so that's minus six divided by what is the distance now between q2 and p all right notice the distance between q1 and q2 is one meter and the distance between q1 and uh, p is 0 0,3 so that total distance there is actually 1,3 so I'm going to say that's 1,3 meters remember that our distance must always be in meters all right so let's calculate there quickly so we're saying 9 exponent 9 multiplied by 6 exponent minus 3 okay divided by 1 comma uh, 1 comma 3 squared and we get uh, that's 3 okay uh, I don't know how accurate you want to be there okay that's 31952.66 okay at the moment uh, we haven't really learned to work with, with significant figures so i am going to just leave that answer uh, in two decimal places so this is going to be in which direction this would be to the left remember the field due to q2 is to the left now how do we then calculate the net all right so in this case we simply say e net we're going to say e net is going to be the sum of our fields just like we did with the forces right so that's going to be eq1 plus eq2 but we need to keep something in mind direction okay so we said take the direction to the right as positive okay so it means that we know in this particular case that answer there should be positive because it's to the right and it means that q2 because it's to the left that would be negative okay so now what does it mean it means it's eq1 we know we are going to substitute a positive 250,000 there okay plus in this case our q2 value is negative that's minus 31952 comma six six i actually should have changed that into a scientific format okay right so now what are we going to have as our final answer i'm going to say two hundred and fifty thousand. okay minus uh 31 uh 952.66 okay and then our final answer there is it's a positive 218,047, 34, okay, Newtons per Coulomb, okay, and what is the direction thereof? It's a positive, so it means that our E net value, sorry for writing right at the bottom there, it means our, our E net value is to, in, to which direction, just like we said there, it must be to the, to the right okay and that is how the cookie crumbles so what i want us to do quickly all right i prepared two examples so that uh, we kind of get another opportunity to um, uh, try that again all right uh, if you want it uh, i can just make it stick a little bit longer there so that you can see it you can pause it and you can copy it down whatever it is that you want to do okay so what we are going to do now is to try the second example once again i took this from a, a previous question paper all right um i adapted the questions a little bit uh just so that it could be easier for us to kind of do together right so once again what do we have here we've got charge m which is four micro coulombs we've got charge n which is six micro coulombs okay and they are placed 0 0.6 meters apart okay and then we've got uh, in this case point x please note at x we do not have a charge there but it is simply just a point now what's the first thing that we do as soon as we know it is a point 
we make an assumption. What is our assumption? That at that point there, there's an imaginary positive charge. Okay? Right. Now they say to us, okay, draw a, oh, by the way, uh, point X is 0, 0,2 meters. I'm sorry about uh, uh, that little clumsiness there. Uh, that's actually 0, 0,2 meters. Okay? Right. So point X is 0, 0,2 meters away from charge N. Okay? And by the way, the charge of N is minus 6 nanocoulombs. All right? Now, first of all, what's the first thing that we are required to do? We need to find out. They say to us, draw a vector diagram showing the field intensity at point X, all right, due to point charge M and N. So let's do that quickly. So I'll say, okay. All right, sorry for that little bit of a noise there. That's the jitter from the table. Right, so in this case, what are we saying? We're saying, look at point X and M, charge M, all right? What type of a force exists between the two? That's imaginary and positive. That is also positive. So what are they doing to each other? They actually are exerting, uh, uh, they are repelling each other. So here it is, they are repelling each other. But Tina, we are going to focus on X. So what is X doing in response to charge M. X would move towards the right. So the force that it would feel would be towards the right. So here's the field due to M. All right. X is a point charge. So we know, it, I mean, uh, X is a, is, is, a, is a point in space. Okay, so it would actually feel a force uh, towards the right because it's being repelled, right? Forget about M a little bit. Now let's focus on N, okay? What type of a force would exist between X and N, all right? So look at that. So X is positive, N is negative. So what are they doing to each other? They are attracting each other, okay? So now we are focusing on, on, on X. What is X going to do in response to N? It would actually move towards N, isn't it? Because it's being attracted there. So in this particular case, what happens? So we know the force that it would feel. Look at this once again. I'm going to draw this uh, so that it becomes bigger than the one due to N, okay? So this is the field due to N. So both of them now are actually to the right. And by the way, once again, it's not really to say that you can't choose to the left as positive. It's just that for convenience sake, I'm just saying, going to say, take direction to the right as positive. Okay. And I'm indicating it. Okay. Right. So this is the field due to M. All right. M is pushing X away. And then the field due to N, N is pulling uh, 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 point X towards itself because we've got an imaginary test charge there. All right, so once again, so goes without saying, all we're going to do now is say we're going to say uh, the field due to M, that's KQM divided by R squared. So let's substitute our values there. 9 exponent 9 multiplied by the charge of M, that's 4 nanocoulombs, so that's 4 times 10 minus 9, remember nano, okay, that's minus 9, divided by the distance between um, uh, uh, x and m, all right? So look at this, between m and n is 0, 0,6, okay? And then between n and x, that's 0, 0,2, so that leaves us with 0, 0,6 minus that 0, 0,2, so that gives us 0, 0,4, so the distance between them is 0, 0,4. So remember to square that distance there. Okay, let's take a calculator quickly. All right, so we're going to say 9 exponent 9 <clears throat> multiplied by 4 exponent minus 9 divided by 0 0.4 squared. Okay, so I get a value of 225. Please remember that is in Newton's 
per coulomb okay right in which direction is that that is to the right okay right so this is the field due to m and then we do the same again so what is the field due to n it's going to be the same thing kqn divided by r squared 9 exponent 9 times the charge of n is 6 times 10 minus 9 please remember we said you do not need to substitute that sign there all we need to we, 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 we use that sign for is to determine the direction okay so that's divided by 0 comma the distance between n and x that's 0 comma 2 okay squared all right and uh, we do the same thing 9 exponent 9 multiplied by 6 exponent minus minus 9 sorry uh, minus 9 uh, divided by 0 0.2 squared okay get a value of 1350 newtons per coulomb note once again remember we had predicted this must be actually larger because of the uh, uh, inverse square relationship of distance that's why we get that value to be actually larger because it's actually closer uh, to n than it is from m right and once again it is to the right now please note so how do we get our net field in that particular case we simply say e net is going to be em plus en so what do we know both of them are to the right okay so both of them are positive so we can substitute our values there that's going to be 225 positive 225 plus a positive 1350 and what do we get uh, plus 225 and what do we get for our final answer that's 1575 newtons per coulomb okay in which direction it must be sorry uh, to the right okay i hope that makes sense all right so once again i'm gonna leave this here now so that you can just pause it have a look at it once again and um, what I want us to do, I don't know if I, I should do it now in this clip or I should make a separate one, but maybe to increase the value of the lesson, let me just do one last question. And um, what I'm going to do is just include uh, two dimensions, okay? What happens when you've got point charges in two dimensions? But I hope this was uh, uh, very simple for you. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a question with you very quickly. Um, I'm not going to be very elaborate on it, uh, but I want us to just include two direction, two dimensions quickly. All right. All right. So we've got uh, a question in two dimensions there. I didn't want to really go uh, too far or, you know, just to be very elaborate on it, but I just want to show you the approach. How would you go about uh, calculating the net field uh, when you've got a two-dimensional arrangement okay right so suppose uh, I'm sorry for my terrible drawing X was supposed to be a point actually so suppose we've got point X all right remember we said this is not a charge but when you are given this it simply just means that X is a point in space okay so X is 0 comma 2 meters away from charge Q with a positive four nanocoulombs charge, all right? And point X is 0 0,1 meters from point charge P, which is minus four nanocoulombs, okay? So what I want us to do is to calculate now the net field that would be experienced at X due to Q and P, all right? So what are we calculating? The net field uh, uh, at x due to p and q all right so the first thing that we're going to do just like we did previously what i want us to do is to draw a diagram okay showing the fields at point x all right so let's do that so suppose this is where we are going to start all right then i'm asking myself a question right p and x all right forget about q for now 
let's just focus on p and x right what do we assume about point x we assume that point x there is a positive test charge there so what type of a force will that point charge feel because of p all right so here's p here's x what are they doing to each other they are attracting each other they are unlike charges so they are attracting each other but we are focusing on x so x would actually move towards point p so we're saying the direction of that field in this case would be towards the south so this is the field due to x okay i mean uh, this is the field due to p so that's going to be ep there right now forget about p for a second let's just focus on q and x so what are they doing to each other they're both positively charged so what are they doing they are repelling each other okay so in this case where is x going to move in response to q where would x move in response to q so what are they doing to each other they are repelling each other so x would kind of go towards that direction to the left or you can say to the west okay uh, let's draw a simple compass there so that's not we okay so we know that's what our, ca our compass looks like okay so in this case it means that point uh there we go there all right um i've, I've actually drawn this uh, kind of incorrectly but i'll tell you why in just a few uh, so this is the field due to q now if you notice once again the field due to q okay the distance there is much bigger all right so in this case it means that the field that would, it would be experienced would be actually smaller than the field that would be experienced due to p because of that inverse square relationship so actually i should have drawn this to be slightly longer okay for the sake of this calculation so this is the field due to p okay right so let me move that there right i showed you on our previous uh, uh, video that when you draw a vector diagram okay just like this one so i can see i've got a field of p going down and then i've got field due to q going in that direction now as I said, the many learners, what they tend to do is that when they show the net field, they will just simply draw a line going like that. Okay? Remember, you can only connect the, 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 the two vectors if they are drawn head to tail. So the first thing is that these ones, look at this, from that point there, this one is going in that direction, this one is going that direction. So they are not head to tail. So what we would need to do is that I need to draw them head to tail first. So what do I do in order to draw them head to tail? So all I just simply do is it doesn't matter which one you start with. Okay. We say, well, every vector must get its turn. Okay. So this is the field due to Q. I've changed nothing about its magnitude. I've changed nothing about uh, its uh, magnitude. So where this vector ends, the other one begins, you see. So that's why how you do a head to tail diagram. Where the other one ends, the other one begins. So this is the tail of uh, EQ. This is the head of EQ. So at the head, I draw the tail of the other one. Okay, so this is now the field due to P, right? Same, same drawing. All I've simply done is I'm now drawing them head to tail. Now look at this. Can you see it's very seamless? If you were thinking about someone walking, this would be someone walking from there till there and walking from there till there, which makes sense, right? So therefore, it would be the same as someone having walked from there till there. Whereas if you look at this one, you can't walk from there till there how do you then jump again from there till there, you see? So what you want to do is that your vector, there must be some kind of a flow to it, okay? Head to tail, tail to head, tail to head, okay? And then it simply means that your net field 
is in that direction there. Now, how do we calculate that net field? Just like we did uh, for the previous examples, right? So we're going to say E net, I, I mean, uh, so let's start with EQ, all right? Let's draw EQ or calculate EQ. So that's going to be a, a KQQ divided by R squared, all right? Um, so that is going to be, okay, that's nine exponent nine multiplied by four times 10. Um, okay, let me move this from here. Okay, four times 10 minus nine divided by, what is the distance between them? That's 0 0,2 squared, okay? Now look at this. I'm just simply going to calculate nine exponent nine multiplied by four exponent minus nine. Okay, divided by the distance there is 0 0,2 squared and I get a value of 900 newtons per coulomb. But where did we say, oh, by the way, please just note there that this is Newton per, that's a dot, and then that's C with an exponent minus one, okay? That's to the minus one. But uh, uh, EQ, where is it going? We know it's going towards the west, okay? Right, I'm just going to continue over to the other side here. So now we're going to say, now let's calculate for E, P. All right, so that's K Q P divided by R squared. Now, there's a way in which you can actually do this much easier um, because now if you want to look at this, the distance of a uh, uh, point P is actually half the distance of Q. So if you half the distance, you actually make the force to be four times larger, okay? Right, I'm gonna show you that uh, probably uh, another time. But uh, think about it, it's a square inverse relationship. So if you half the distance, right? If it's divided by two, then what you do is that you actually make the force to be four times larger, all right? Uh, I'll show you that uh, uh, separately, but uh, if you wanna do this the conventional way, this is going to be 9 times 10 my, uh, to the power 9 multiplied by what is the charge of P. It's still the same value. Please remember, do not substitute the sign there. So that's minus 9 divided by what is the, um, that's 0 0.1. If you didn't believe me in what I said, look at that. That's 9 exponent 9 multiplied by 4 exponent minus 9 divided by 0 0.1 squared and look at what you get 3600 which is actually 900 multiplied by 4 so 3600 newtons per coulomb well that's because the two the magnitude of the two charges were equal the only thing that was a difference that was different there was the size of the distance okay so where is this this is going to the south Okay, now we're looking for the net field. Now look at this. So we know we're looking for the net, so that's going to be actually the hypotenuse. So please note, this is a, a, a 90 degree triangle. All right, so what are we going to say? We're going to say E net squared is equals to EP squared plus EQ squared. Okay, so we're going to just simply take the square root there. Uh, because we want E net, not the square of it. So we're going to say, all right, take square root of 3,600, uh, sorry, 3,600 squared plus nine, 900 squared, okay? So that's 3,600 squared plus 900 squared, Okay, and that gives us 3710.7, uh, we can just simply say 0.8, okay, Newtons per Coulomb. Now, I showed you in the last video, suppose you wanted to calculate um, the 
direction of it, okay? Most of the time, they usually just say calculate the magnitude of the net field. But in this case, let me just show you in case they ask for direction. Sorry about that movement there. Right, so in this case, how would I get the, the, the direction, right? So once again, look at this. My reference direction in this particular case, here's my net field. Where is it from? It's from that line there and where uh, uh, what is the uh, what is where is the direction of this line it's actually towards the west so i'm going to look for that angle and express that direction that angle from the west line okay right so i'm simply going to say all right so i know what is the magnitude of ep i know what is the magnitude of eq so look at this ep is opposite to my angle and eq is adjacent okay please if you don't know our trig ratios you must just make sure that you learn these off by heart sorry i'm just going to say the 10 of theta okay is equals to what is my opposite side that's ep okay 10 is opposite over adjacent so that's going to be 10 opposite which is ep over eq right so it means that my theta is going to be the arc tangent, all right, of EP over EQ. I'm just dragging this out now. Okay, so that's going to be the arc tangent of our value for EP. We found that to be 3,600 divided by a value for EQ was 900, okay? So all I'm just simply going to do there is say arc tangent. So that second function 10, okay, three, three, sorry, three, six hundred divided by 900. And what do we get there? So now it means our direction is 75.95 degrees. If you wanted to, you could have just simply said your direction is uh, 76 degrees, okay? So now it means our net field, okay, is 73710.8 newtons per coulomb at which direction? At. Now notice, what am I going to do? I'm going to take that reference line there from the west, okay from the west okay i'm going to move 75.95 degrees towards which direction towards the south so from my west line i'm moving towards the south okay so in this case i'm just going to move that up here a little bit okay the shot might look clumsy but uh, just so that you get it so my e net okay i'm just going to write it there is 3710.8 newtons per coulomb at west from the west i move 75.95 degrees towards the south okay right so from the west 75.95 degrees towards the south okay right and uh, essentially that is how the cookie crumbles i hope uh, that was clear so i'm just going to remove all of that out of the shot so that you can see it clearly i hope that makes sense all right and um, by the way please don't forget to hit subscribe like please recommend the page to other people and also just make sure that you um, uh, uh, you make a comment if maybe there's something that you need clarity on so that we can cover that in our next lesson. But for now, this is where we leave our lesson. Thank you so much.